right guys, today I got the new Crumble Minis box and let's try and review all these cookies today. Okay, the lineup for this week is cannoli, cookies and cream chocolate chip as always, a vanilla crumb cake, raspberry lemonade, and blueberry cheesecake. As usual, I'm gonna rate them one through five because chocolate chip, you can't really rate them because it's always there. As usual is crazy. And before anybody says anything, this person works at Crumble Cookie, okay? In their video, they do say they work at Crumble Cookie, which is probably not a good thing given the fact this person obviously has a food addiction and they can't control themselves around food, which is not necessarily their fault because I believe this person is actually like 18 years old. And anytime I see somebody that's around that age bracket or before that, I always think, why did your parents like not care about you like i'm sure they cared about you in areas that were really superficial like they obviously cared enough to put a roof over your head like the fundamental ideas of being a, a parent obviously but why don't you care that your child is literally like monstrously obese before they even hit adulthood that's insane to me like you're literally setting your child up for a lifetime of problems because you were lazy? Because you just didn't think it was an appropriate thing? Did you not notice that your child was having problems going? Like, did you just like purposely ignore it? Like, did you just notice that your daughter or whoever it was was walking up the stairs, tons of respiratory issues, tons of chronic pains when walking down the street or doing anything even remotely close to what human beings do? Like, did you just not notice that? You do realize that makes you a terrible person, right? I'm just gonna say it out loud. Like, I know that there are a lot of reasons why parents can't do certain things, right? But uh, when it comes to things like this, what is up with parents not being proactive in their kids' life? For a lot of people, they think that just being obese is just like a natural or normal thing. It's not. It's actually terrible. Like, would you be okay with you walking on your son or daughter doing heroin? It's the same thing, except it's a little bit less worse because at least the heroin is right away. You're seeing the problem right then and there. Whereas for the obesity, you're maybe, you're maybe not seeing the problems right away. I mean, you are, but you're not seeing them directly. You're seeing them like passively, right? These are not issues that are affecting them right away. You're not seeing any blood. You're not seeing anything like that. You're just seeing like the problem slowly occurring onto that person. And make no mistake about it. When you're fat like this, you're aging your body by like a good five or six years, almost like perpetually. So by the time you're 20, you're realistically like 26, 27. And then as that keeps going, you're adding in extra years and also on your joints, your bones, everything's going to be drastically negatively affected. It's just like, it hurts me so, so much because a lot of times when you're this age, when you're younger, you have no idea uh, how your life's going to be. And if you're coming out and you're going into the world with all these problems that you shouldn't even be having to deal with because being an adult in general is going to be very difficult, especially becoming a new adult, having to deal with all those problems and then stacking on all the other issues to deal with obesity and food problems, dude. That's going to be majorly negatively affecting you for the rest of your life. And it's just like so crazy to me that like parents don't see when your child is a child, your child's going to be an adult for the majority of their life. And you're literally perpetually just saying, I don't care. They're going to do whatever they want. It shouldn't matter or whatever. I don't know how they're thinking about this, but your kid's now going to be perpetually fucked for the rest of their life because they can't deal with the, like they, they can't deal with food. They, they're just going to be obese. And by the way, when you're a fat kid, you're fat for the rest of your life for the most part. Okay. It's very difficult for a child to be fat and try to get out of that realm as they get older. Now, I'm not saying it doesn't happen. It does happen, but for the most part is very difficult to break that conditioning because if you believed that this was no problem when you were younger, there's no doubt in my brain that you're going to believe that same thing when you're 20 or 30 or 40 years old, 100%. I meet people all the time that grow up one particular way and they're like that for the rest of their life. So it's the same thing when you're fat and it just hurts me. It hurts me deeply, bro. I don't even try to play the moral high ground here, but it's, it's most definitely saddening in many, many ways. Of course, I don't have kids and I'm like projecting this upon other people, but like, dude, you have to take some responsibility on that shit, dude. That's insane. Your kid is literally suffering on a daily basis and it's not cute. It's diabetic. Um, first up, I'm gonna try cannoli. I've never actually had a real cannoli in general. Which is really sad, by the way. Like, you okay, look, cannolis are okay. They're all right. I remember I had my first cannoli with the mayor of Boston back in like 2005. His name was Mayor Menino. Everybody loved him. He was a great guy. I think he was like the longest running mayor of like all time in the United States or some shit like that. He was a great guy. Cannolis are okay. They're really super, like, everybody loves them for some reason, but they're not as good as like a lot of people say they are. Uh, they're okay. They're all right. Um, it's really sad though when people eat something when they eat something that is not reflecting of the actual thing that they're eating, like a cannoli cookie. You get an idea, but it's actually really, really sad. But like I said before, this person works at Crumble Cookie, so they probably have a whole bunch of deductions or they get maybe employee discounts or something like that. 
for ordering these cookies. I don't know, do whatever. So I'm just gonna be like tasting this and reading it based on how it tastes like as a cookie. Okay, cheers. I don't know why so many people like watching bigger people eat on TikTok, dude. It's just like, I don't get anything from it. I really don't. And I know that there are a lot of people that maybe like the mouth noises, or I think there's a lot of people out there that find enjoyment in watching somebody really, really big eat a lot of calories. I just don't like it personally. Me personally, as it is, I don't even like eating in general. Like I do it obviously because I want to exist, but uh, when I see people that are obviously having problems with the overconsumption of food and then also having positions where people are actively enabling them and they're putting themselves in scenarios where other people can enable them through the internet. It's just like, you know, you're being rewarded. You're getting, you're being rewarded and you're being rewarded and all these negative feedback loops, like it all derives from the same thing, which is obviously not good. Like, I don't care that you eat crumble cookies. It's fine. Go ahead, eat your crumble cookies. I think like, unlike a lot of people that it's fine to eat whatever you want to eat. As long as you're doing it in moderation, as long as you're doing it within your calories, you should be okay, right? There's a room for everything as long as you want it to happen in your diet, right? It's no problem. I, had, I ate hot dogs yesterday, but guess what? I was below my calories and, and I was able to eat it, okay? But for a lot of people, they're just completely ignoring the fact that these particular cookies or this whatever, eating six cookies, even if it's a bite or two bites each on every single cookie, you're just introducing potentially like, what, 50, 50 calories each bite, even at the bare minimum. Most of these cookies are like literally like 400, 500 calories, no joke, okay? Like these are deluxe cookies, dude. They make these daily. So when I see people that are like eating even a bite of these, I don't think they realize how many calories they're actually introducing in their day. And But they're doing it for content. So they can just chalk it up to, well, it's not that bad because I'm only doing it for content. You do this content every day. Like that's a problem, dude. And even if this is like once a day, I know you're obese. So you're having problems with this shit, dude. It's not a sustainable practice, okay? You might... A lot of people don't understand what I mean by sustainable. Like you might be able to live a long period of time while doing this particular type of activity, but ask anybody that's lived like this for a long period of time, it drastically changes the way you live your life. Like talk to somebody that's 300 pounds and at 40 compared to somebody that's of a good healthy weight and stayed that good healthy weight up to that 40 mark too. Their lives are completely different. They're suffering from way different problems. And of course, the person that's 40, that's also thinner, is going to have problems without a doubt. But that's not even close to the amount of problems that a person at 40 years old is going to have when they're obese and they've been obese for their, their, potentially their whole life. It's not even close, bro. Like you're literally just set, you're just living your life on hard mode perpetually. Okay, that is delicious. It's like brown sugar, cinnamon. Wow. Mmm. <sighs> That is so good. There's a bunch of cinnamon flavor in there, so I love that. It's very fresh and not super rich and overbearing, and I know for a fact that my mom would love that. Even though she doesn't like cannolis, to me it just tastes like a almost a snicker doodle sandwich with cream and size and chocolate chips. A lot of people also tell me that her mom enables her and stuff like that. Like for a long time, she was underage and she was doing stuff like this and her mom would be in the videos and she would buy her the stuff because obviously you're not going to be able to work and so your mom's going to give you the food and I guess your mom just didn't care the fact that you were literally super ridiculously overweight or obese like suffering from high blood pressure or whatever the hell it's crazy I don't know how many parents like the amount of times I've seen parents like do videos with their kids it's like oh my god look how cute my child is she's so plump she's so like it's so amazing she's shaped like a bowling ball first of all if you're calling your kid a bowling ball that's really disrespectful and by the way your, sh your child should not be looking like a, a ball used for rolling and hitting pins. That's crazy. Your child is literally a person, okay? Like, can we just talk about that for a second? And also, it's not cute. Your kid is literally suffering, like, <laughs> perpetually. Like, the quality of life of that kid is insane, okay? Like, I don't know if you guys... I don't know if you guys grew up around fat kids. I grew up around fat kids, okay? I grew up around a lot of fat kids. I remember this one kid named Jose that would literally, for the Christmas Day, the, for Christmas Day celebration, would be Santa Claus because he was the fattest person in the entire school, bigger than adults, okay? And keep in mind, Jose was like Puerto Rican, so it was kind of weird when he was sitting down on the, the big chair and he had that big sack on his back or whatever, and he was like, you know, really, really massive, and then you sit down in his lap like, bro, I'm literally older than you and you're Puerto Rican. I don't believe in Puerto Rican Santa Claus. I believe in white guy Santa Claus, okay? But you know what? I guess it's ambiguous. I guess it doesn't really matter. Like, Santa Claus can change colors, right? Because I remember when I was a kid, I would walk down the street, and there'd be, like, a Santa Claus doing the, the, the jingle whatever. And then you'd walk down the street a little bit more, and there'd be a black Santa Claus outside of a church doing the same thing. And you'd ask your mom, like, hey, what the hell is going on? Why is Santa Claus black here? And why is Santa Claus white here? And your mom's response is, 
they don't exist. It's not real, okay? Like, which is probably the best response because, like, realistically speaking here, how do you even try to tell a child that? Like, how do you even try to to, to, to go into the deep intricacies about, like, oh, no, it's multi-universal and, like, that shit, you know, it, you only perceive what you want to perceive and, you know... Uh, certain people have to, you know, they, 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 the the borders of the borders of our reality are being interfered by by the texture and the skin color of a different Santa Claus. It's like nobody's doing that shit. It's better to just tell me straight out that Santa Claus is not real and like, you know, all the toys that I got, which I knew that you bought for me because I was there when you bought them for me. Obviously, I'm not from Santa Claus and stuff like that. But anyway, I don't know what we're talking about right now. Um, but yeah, it's not cool to have a kid that's really really fat. It's not. I know a lot of parents think it's cute, but you're literally setting your child up for failure. Shame. Next up, we're gonna try the cookies and cream. Mmm. Whoa, that is rich. I mean, it tastes like- She gets a lot of views, by the way. If you go on her TikTok, she gets a lot of views. A lot of people like this content. And you know what, I'm not surprised. A lot of people on TikTok like really weird content for some reason. You, you come across something sometimes and you're just like, what? Are, why are you guys even watching this shit? And you know what, I'm not surprised. There are a lot of people on, like look, I'm okay with watching rom-coms from the early 2000s because I like the trash. I like the garbage. I know that it's the same story every single time. I like Matthew McConaughey. What do you want from me? I like uh, those old school rom-coms that make no sense that all follow the same plot. I get it. They're garbage. And I acknowledge they're garbage, okay? No strings attached or, you know, uh, she's just not into you or whatever. She's out of your league or whatever, dude. I like those movies. They're garbage. I get it, dude. But... The point I'm making is it's okay to like something that's garbage and acknowledge it for garbage. A lot of people just be praising certain certain things, bro, and you're just like watching it like, dude, this person is – this is bad. Like this is really, really bad. How can you guys keep consuming this stuff? But you know what? It is what it is, right? Like I like garbage and maybe you like garbage or whatever. Maybe I'm your garbage. I don't know, dude. I don't know, man. Whatever. Using cream, so good. <laughs> Next up is chocolate chip original. A chocolate chip is always going to be chocolate chip. I've never tried the minis in general, so this is my first time. I also don't like, I know this is completely besides the point, like, but having a cookie with a uh, piece of lemon on it is diabolical in my opinion. Is there, isn't there? everybody just taking that off? Nobody's like biting into the cookie and then like maybe getting a piece of the the shell of the uh, lemon. That's diabolical, bro. Who's doing that? Trying it. I love this. I think it's perfect, especially if you want it for like two people. This will still last me probably two days with my mom having it too. I couldn't eat anymore. Like if I, if you came back to me and you're like, hey, I got some cookies and I popped open the box and the box, uh, all the cookies had a bite or two bites taken out of each one of them. I'm not, I don't want it. That's you. I don't want your backwash. I don't want your mouth water on my cookies. Like I get it. I'm your mom. Like hypothetically speaking here, I get it. But simultaneously, I don't care. I'm not trying to do that, dude. I have really good guy friends that have really really good dental hygiene okay a lot of good um you know they know how to wash themselves they know how to clean themselves but even then i would still not want to do it because i don't want your backwash mouth water on my cookies or whatever i'm eating or whatever the hell it'd be like you ever you ever go over to somebody's house and they're having a birthday party and they order like five or six boxes of pizza you ever see those people that take the slice and they fold it and they eat the pizza but then they take the crust because they don't like the crust for some reason which is you're a pussy if you don't like the crust okay i'm gonna call you out on that you're a terrible person what are you doing dude be an adult eat the crust okay they take the crust and they put it back in the box as if anybody's gonna go back to the box and take open the box see the crust and go oh wow crust take the crust out and eat it you're crazy first of all nobody's doing that shit you're diabolical for even putting it in the box okay and to top it off you're a bad person because i know let's say hypothetically that you had two slices of pizza okay but because your two slices of pizza and my two slices of pizza are not the same i'm eating two slices of pizza with the crust you're eating two slices of pizza without the crust therefore you're more likely to to, to indulge in a third slice to make up for the fact that you didn't eat that like let's say one fourth of the slice or even one fifth of the slice because that's where the crust is so you're probably going to go for that extra slice because you think that's how you make up for it you're eating more pizza and I'm eating less pizza, and I'm being literally negatively rewarded for that. That's terrible. You're being rewarded for your bad behaviors. Do better. Stop leaving the crust in the box as if anybody's going to eat it. And also, eat the crust. Stop being a bitch. Nobody... Do I have to say anything more than that? The crust is some of the best part of the pizza. I'm sick of everybody saying that shit. I'm sick of people, like, putting the crust in there. Why? Why? What are you doing? Like, that's literally majority of what the pizza is already. I get it's covered in sauce and cheese, but, like, it, there's still probably some sauce and cheese. If you wanted to really do that, 
Just leave more of the sauce and cheese part and then just put that in your mouth. It's gonna be thicker, but so what? Like you've had thick things in your mouth before, right? <laughs> no, but you know what I'm saying? Like it's such a crazy thing when I see people just leaving the, the that's happened to me recently. It's just like, what are you fucking doing? You guys are adults, dude. I, I'd expect this when I went to like a five-year-old's pizza party, but not when I'm going to like a, a workplace occurrence and there's like a, tons of boxes of pizza and everybody's here minimum age is 42. Like what are you guys doing, bro? Get your shit together. But next up is vanilla crumb cake. They do, they do kind of sound a little bit. They do sound good. I'll give it that. They, they do sound crunchy in all the right places and soft simultaneously. She don't like it. I'm calling it. She don't like it. Oh, well, she's going for the second bite, though. Very simple, very just vanilla, not my favorite. When you don't get, like, a big reaction, like, one thing I've seen a lot with these reactions, like, they take a bite and they go, Oh my god, mmm, mmm. Like, I've, I've, I've been noticed this with all these mukbangers, as if every single food tastes amazing simultaneously. This is not the how it works. I know you don't have any taste buds anymore. Like, honestly speaking, a lot of these people, because they weigh as much as they do, they're consuming literally maybe double the amount of calories that me or you are consuming. And I always think, like, you don't have taste buds anymore, right? Like, there's no way you're shotgunning food in your throat consistently and you're tasting it. That's crazy. You guys barely chew already. So when I see people put a bite in their mouth and go, mmm, you don't care. You don't taste. You don't have taste buds anymore. Your taste buds are obliterated. You don't need those anymore. It's not, you're not eating for the flavor of the food anymore. You're just eating to eat, okay? Have these people literally just swallow instantly or they have, like, buildup of acid in their throat and their mouth and it just, like, dissolves the food instantly. So I don't really trust a lot of these fat like these fat food reviewers because most of them they don't do shit anyway like if you're rev if you're reviewing food right and you're going okay guys we're gonna do a grandiose food review and it's gonna be amazing today guess what we're doing it it's gonna be crazy right and then you're you're eating it none of these people actually contribute anything to it they just go like it tastes good wow this is really good what am i getting from that you're not telling me anything about it tell me about the texture tell me about the, the sugar contents tell me about why you like it how much was it? Can you tell me about anything at all? And by the way, you just reviewing food in your car is not good enough anymore, okay? I need you guys to do it. If you're not gonna be, if you're not gonna be like really, really cool, or you're not gonna like give me the information that I need about the cookies or whatever you're reviewing, you need to review it in a cool place, like on the side of a volcano or like inside of a sewer next to the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles or something like that. Like you need to review it in a cool place or do something grandiose to make it seem like it's better than it actually is because it's too easy for you guys to sit down in your car and eat six cookies while telling me it's good, it's really good. Oh really? You're telling me the cookies that were like $9 each are good? Would have never known, would have never known. You could also introduce some things like, mm, it's of good consistency, it's got a good crunch to it, you know? The texture on the inside is soft, and it's, you know, the, the icing on the outside seems like it might be a little old, but overall, but you get what you pay for, it's not that bad. And plus, the retailer, the person behind the counter, was really nice to me. Like, you could include all that stuff, but yet you're not. And you know what? I'm not going to blame her specifically, because I know that maybe she's, like, not ever been in a position where she needs to do that before, but too many of these food reviewers are doing nothing, okay? They're literally doing less than bare minimum. Get your shit together. If you're going to be a food reviewer, add in extra, okay? Make your words more valuable. The frosting on it reminds me of the inside of an Oreo. And I'm pretty sure it's, it's supposed to be like that. <laughs> Second to last cookie that we're going to try. No way you're going to leave that on top. strawberry lemonade. This one's like the prettiest. Mmm. Okay. You get that punch of lemon, but it's not super overpowering. It's really delicious. It's fresh. It's like, okay. if you want to be on the beach or at a pool, you get this cookie. That's what it reminds me of. Uh, it's better than nothing, right? Even she's doing more than the bare minimum. Whatever, do this move on to the next clip. I can't watch this anymore. I got the bag. Hi guys, today I got Chick-fil-A. I got a large meal with the fries and a Sprite. And then my sandwich is the spicy deluxe chicken sandwich. And I got three count of their chicken tenders. So let's eat. It's a lot of food. I also wanna like point out when you're young like this, right? Usually in your earlier years, like let's say hypothetically, or not even hypothetically, let's just say like from the 18s to like 25, those are usually the years where people like to, to really, really like expand themselves and find out what they really are and how to express themselves. Like I know that when I was those ages, bro, I was literally walking around with like an X-Men belt buckle and I was wearing really, really tight t-shirts and I was wearing my hair in like a, an emo beanie. But that wasn't me, right? You have to go through a lot of times and you have to go through a lot of changes to really understand who you are. And it turns out I don't really care about my appearance very much, right? I mean, like, well, look at me. Like, what the fuck do you want from me? But 
a lot of people, those are the time periods where you really find out the most about yourself. And it really sucks a lot of big, fat, giant camel dicks that you're, if you're really fat, it's going to be really difficult for you because like you have an identity crisis because you don't actually know what you look like. You have no idea what key characteristics you have. Like a lot of people will just basically boil you down to you're a fat person. This is what you are. And no matter what you do, right, you could do a lot of stuff. You can try to make yourself emo. You could try to be like the the goth girl or something. I don't fucking know. You could do a lot of stuff. Like the goth girl, you could be the, you know, I don't know. What am I, I don't even know what I'm fucking talking about. I just said goth because she's wearing a black shirt. But the point I'm making is there's a bunch of stuff that you can try to do, but overall nobody would really it won't really stick to anybody because most people will just look at you as, yeah, well, like, what the fuck are you doing? Like, you're fucking fat. So, like, what does that matter? Like, you're literally fat. Like, none of this stuff matters at all. It'd be like putting lipstick on a pig, literally. So, it's really tough sometimes when I see people that are really, really overweight in those earlier years because you're taking away some of the best years of your life where you're trying to diagnose yourself and you just can't because you're never going to. It's just like you're just perpetually a fat person. That sucks. I'm not saying you can't have an identity. An identity as a fat person, but usually all those secondary characteristics are going to be almost always shadowed, big shadowed by the glaring problem that you have, which is the weight. And I get it. Food tastes amazing. It does, especially nowadays when we have literal food that is like genetically made, right? To taste good in the best, most amazing possible way. But is it worth really sacrificing potentially the best years of your life on the earth for that? No, I don't think so, bro. But anyway, Mm. I think it's extra spicy today. I just like hiccuped <laughs> and I never do that. Cheers. Mm. Mm. I just um, paid for a membership to Lifetime, Lifetime Gym because that's the only one around me that has a dry sauna. I had a membership with them about like three, four years ago. Well, it was me and my mom, but now I just... I want it back because I want the sauna and I love that they do like dance classes and such so after this I'm gonna go there and get my photo taken and get a card so that I can like you know check in whenever I want cheers but that's my plan after this oh she didn't say cheers she usually says cheers before everything that she every bite she takes but she didn't do it there but uh I just think if you're gonna go to the gym that's great you know that's amazing that's fantastic I just hope that if you're about to eat literally 1500 calories of fast food and then go to the gym and you think you're going to do anything at all besides literally make yourself feel sad because you're going to go to the gym and you're going to try to burn calories and then after you do that for three or four days and you step on the scale and you realize you gained more weight you're going to get really discouraged you're going to look at that weight on the scale and you're going to go oh, it's not working like going to the gym is literally a detriment to me i'm not doing anything besides making myself un uncomfortable going to the gym embarrassing myself doing these workouts that are not even benefiting me but then you don't realize that the reason why you're not gain, you're not losing weight is because you're eating 1500 calories a meal and going to the gym and even burning like 500 of that which is realistically never going to happen most people are not burning that money unless you want to stand span there stand there for like an hour and a half on the cardio machine uh most people are not eating that amount of calories, okay? You're gonna have to lower that drastically and it's not gonna be very possible for you because you make content on the internet that is literally you just body slamming 15, 2000 calories per meal. So I see consistently people get discouraged when they go to the gym because they gain weight and they don't realize that the reason why they're gaining weight is because they're eating too much and they think that all they have to do is just go to the gym and it's like the magical solution to like losing weight when it's not. It's a diet. You can't outwork a terrible, disgusting, sloppy diet. It's not gonna work. So just get it through your head, you know? Um, so, I mean, it's great that she's going to the gym, but it seems like she's going to the gym for the wrong reason. She literally just said she's going to go there for the sauna, which is really, really crazy at all. I don't even know what you do in a sauna, dude. I guess you just like, you sit in a room with a whole bunch of sweaty dudes and pour water on rocks for 35 minutes. I don't know. I guess there's like benefits to it. But whenever I see dudes go, I want to go to the steam room. I'm always thinking you're gay. Like that's crazy as hell. Like I get it, you know, but simultaneously, if can you imagine like five or six hairy men inside of a steam room naked, meat slinging out, sweating, dude, I would be gay too. I mean, you know what I'm talking about? That would be my coming out day. Like if I, if I ever tell you guys I'm going to a sauna, that's me admitting that I'm gay. But it's probably different for women. You know, I don't know what women do in the sauna. I have no idea what women do in general. You guys have, like, you guys do things that are so incredibly bipolar to me. Like, you have the best conversations, but they almost lead nowhere anytime. And I don't know why you guys feel like changing the subject all the time. Can we just try to, like, stick on one subject? Like, I get it. Yes. Uh, I don't know how to tag your Instagram post. I don't know anything about Instagram. Hey, do you think this story looks cool? I don't know. I guess. Do you think my butt looks fat? Uh, sure, it looks great, matter of fact. It's a very good-looking buttocks. Hey, 
How do you think I should tag this? I don't know. I, what are you talking about? Hey, what kind of clothes do you think I should wear? I don't know. I'm like, I was trying to tell you about something like five minutes ago. And now we're on to this whole big thing. Can you please like, let me tell you about something? And uh, whatever. I don't even know what we're talking about anymore, dude. Mm. On a side note, I got my nails done yesterday. I don't like them. I don't like them at all, dude. They look like... They look like you were like a zombie and you were putting your nails in somebody and you peeled out skin or something like that. They don't look good. And it's like this I don't like long nails on like really big fingers because they're kind of like, they scare me a little bit. I don't like long nails in general because I know that when you do anything in the real world, you're going to be impeded by that. I saw a woman one day literally try to pick up her credit card that fell on the floor and she did it for like, not even joking, 35 minutes before a guy came over and literally picked it up for her for the first thing. Because she had these long like acrylic nails, but they were like uh pointy at the top and she was trying to go for it and she couldn't pick it up and she kept trying to multiple times and a guy came over and he's like i'll get it for you and he literally like picked it up and he's like here you go and she put it in and she did it and i was just thinking, like that's irrelevant like this is so bad like how much did you even pay for that dude like you went to the vietnamese you went to the vietnamese acrylic store and they probably charged you like 85 dollars to do your nails and now you can't even pick up stuff off the floor you're irrelevant like I, what are you doing and it's also really uncomfortable for me when i see people that have like really really fat fingers or really really fat hands and i see those like long fingernails so uncomfortable for me to look at because it's like i see something so incredibly chiseled and then i see this very very ginormous bone like this gi ginormous you know like uh, kind of like water balloons uh for the rest of your body uh, I don't know, and also I don't really understand why so many people get acrylics when you're already tremendously overweight or like you're doing your makeup so incredibly well or whatever. It just doesn't make sense to me. Like, I get it, you know what? Go ahead and do what you want to do. We all have hobbies. Um, but sometimes I think, why are you focusing so heavy on this when you have all these other issues that are literally way bigger issues than this? But anyway. Gold chrome flower type of thing. It's really pretty. Damn. Didn't even get started on the uh, mm. the fries, dude. Right now I'm reading Play Along by Liz Tomford and oh my God, Isaiah and Kennedy, chef's kiss. True. I don't know any of that stuff, but yes, definitely. Oh, the drink too, forgot about the drink. And she has the fries on the side, yep. A large fry too, I thought. I like those fries, those are cool. Ooh, those sound crunchy, dude. Mm. You know, in the book Play Along, it came out this month, I believe. Um, but I love the other books that Liz Tomford wrote. Um, Caught Up is my favorite out of the Windy City series. And this is about his brother, or in Caught Up, Kai and Miller. It's Kai's brother, Isaiah, in this fourth book. And it's really sweet to see his point of view in how his like childhood grew up and how <laughs> Kennedy and him got married on her his mother's anniversary of I don't care I I, I have I have no context on any of this stuff like I was prepared to listen but you know she seems like a really nice girl she does she seems like she's got a lot of personality she seems like she has a lot to give to the world she seems like she's really really looking forward to the rest of her life and that's amazing that's fantastic i always treasure that that's great i think people should do more i think that it's amazing when people have you know goals and stuff like that and so much personality but it just sucks so much ass knowing that she's in a position like this because it's gonna break it's gonna take a lot to break out of this particular type of mold literally so you know, all I can say is, like, I hope that she does better. I hope that there is somebody in her life that's going to help her push through this, that's going to maybe be there, that's going to persuade her, or, like, I don't know, dude. Like, there needs to be somebody in her life that's going to help her, because it seems like um, she made it this far. Her mom didn't really care enough to really say anything beneficial to her that was going to benefit her in a way to lose weight. It seems like she was literally enabling her. Um, the rest of her family, I guess, maybe just doesn't care either, or maybe they do, but maybe it's not going to, like, do anything because your mom is, like, the ultimate person in your life that tells you, like, hey, no. Like, I know a lot of people that literally will change their mind because their mom says something and, like, immediately they'll change their mind to no to yes. Like, literally, I see that consistently. So, a lot of people leave, a lot of people live vicariously through other people. And it sucks a lot. Um, but I hope that... I hope that she does better, dude. I mean, it sucks a lot of dick, dude. Sucks a lot of ass, dude. But that's the end of the video, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video today. It's a depressing one. Um, you know, uh, I, like I said earlier, I hope this person does better. I hope this person is going to enjoy life in a very, you know, great way. But to be honest, dude, a lot of this stuff that's on her... 
uh, how she eats, how she acts in society. Uh, you know, the, her recording these videos is going to impede her. It's going to, it's going to, like, she's going to eventually come to the realization that this shit is not practical. And hopefully, she'll make a decision based off that because she's an adult now. So, but anyway, guys. We're going to end the video here. If you watch the video in its entirety and or you're here right now, leave it down below by typing in tree, T-R-E-E. -E, or if you have a tree emoji, you can throw it down there too and I'll appreciate it. I really will appreciate it. We have to make a nature enclosure or something like that for all the animals and all the delicate bunnies and uh, organisms. Maybe some lizards. You like iguanas? What about like other things like, uh, I don't know. Let me think about something like a koala. Do you guys think a koalas are cool? They're kind of pussies. I saw a koalas fight. They don't really do shit. They just kind of throw each other out of a tree. And I guess it's like bad if the tree is like bigger than six feet. But most of the time they just kind of fall and they cry and then they crawl back up and they fight again and then they fall again. It's... It's a never-ending cycle. But uh, anyway, it doesn't matter. You're beautiful. You're amazing. You're spectacular. I know your motivations. And you are such an amazing person. I love the way you cleaned your house today. The way that you swept that floor. I know you made that mess. And it was really, really a lot. It was a big mess. But guess what? You were responsible enough to look at that mess and go, I'm going to clean this up. Instead of looking at that mess and go, nah, I'll do that later. That's amazing. I'm happy. I'm proud. And you know what? You're exquisite for doing that. Good job. You amazing person. Thank you for cleaning that floor. Now I will be no longer impeded when I go into your house. But anyway, um, if you want to check my socials, it'll all be linked down below in the description. Enjoy the rest of your day, guys. I love you. Peace.